Aloha everyone, this is May 20th and 21st of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. In the early morning hours of May 20th, the channelized lava flow that has been produced from Fisher 20 is still moving downhill roughly three miles and making ocean entry at around the McKinsey Beach Park area also known as Malama Flats. This was the scene when lava crossed Highway 137, also known as the Red Road, that runs along the Puna coastline. As the sun rises over the eruption, the people of Lower Puna are greeted with a new sight. They get their first glimpse of what would be known as a Lay's Plume, a plume of steam that is billowing from the ocean entry. A Lay's Plume is essentially just a interaction between the lava and the salt water of the ocean. The Lay's part of it is mostly just steam, but it's also mixed with hydrochloric acid that makes it hazardous to people that would be standing directly in the plume. Now the plume is of course going to be carried by the predominant wind patterns which on this morning happen to be the trade winds that are carrying it to the southwest. I haven't talked about it yet but the national media does play a role in this whole thing and their coverage of the eruption has been questionable at best. The portrayal of this Lay's plume in the media is essentially that this is the largest threat currently in the eruption which is blatantly untrue. The Lay's Plume, as long as you're not directly in it, is relatively benign. In the morning overflight from McCalber, we see multiple lava channels still active. Now, these lava channels had attempted to converge on the way down just before making the ocean entry, but ended up running parallel to each other and making two distinct lobes that made ocean entry separately. Now we're just a couple days into phase two of the eruption and already the intensity of the activity has increased and surpassed the entirety of phase one. Back up slope at the eruptive vents, we find a curtain of fire being produced from fissures 20 and 22. Now this wall of lava, which is being produced from this very long fissure system, is generating all the multiple flows that are making their way out of the rift zone, trying to make it down slope to the ocean. At this point in the eruption, the activity in Leilani Estates has mostly paused. The phase one of the eruption was characterized by multiple fissures popping up and a couple homes to maybe a couple dozen homes would be lost in a day. But it was a slow and painful process. Lani Puna Gardens got it hard and fast. Once lava entered the boundaries of the subdivision, the devastation of the subdivision would happen only in a couple of days. This is also the day that we saw a ground crack emerge near Fisher 20, beneath one of the channelized flows that had been moving downslope from the fissure. And once this crack emerged, all of the lava from this particular channel began draining into it. Now, we don't know exactly where this lava ends up going. It just kind of disappears here into the depths of the earth. And we never really think about it again because what's coming in the next couple of days is going to completely overshadow it. This is once again a point where we need to talk about the roads and access into Lower Puna. When the lava crossed Highway 137, that cut off another major thoroughfare for the residents trying to get back to their homes and continue the evacuation process. There's also these cracks that have emerged in Leilani Estates that vehicles have become trapped in. This is not the first vehicle to be trapped and it's not going to be the last. The county at this point was already scrambling to address the lack of access and the threats to the emergency escape routes for the residents of Lower Puna. One such thing they did was the paving of Government Beach Road which was completed around this time. And this would prove to be a very wise move. There is not a lot of moves that were made in the 2018 eruption by the county authorities that were overseeing it that I entirely agreed upon, but this is one of them. Some of the residents, well, they're gonna make their own road as well. They begin bushwhacking through the jungle to establish a passable four x four road to be able to get to the areas that have been isolated by these lava flows. Back up at the Kilauea summit, magma in the shallow system continues to drain beneath the Kilauea caldera into the lower east zone feeding the eruption. 
ash explosions are still common within Holly Mountain Mau. Learn stuff every day from this guy. So. We also get our first update from a familiar face. Questions. Feel free to ask, but this is f it. That's it. How's it going, Philip? That's it. All right. Now, Kai Kamarzo, he's been doing eruption updates the entire duration of the event and prior to it, multiple times a day, sharing information with the community. But this is really the first time that Philip Bong, our resident volcanologist, makes an appearance on a Kaika stream to share a little bit of knowledge about what's going on and kind of what he expects from here. And one of the things he shares is that we have yet to see the real force of the eruption happen. The surge is still coming. Transitioning into May 21st, Fisher 22 is producing a large amount of lava that is feeding the channelized flow, making its way down to the ocean. Now, Fisher 22 is on the boundary of the Punu Geothermal Venture, but within its property. One of the concerns is now that lava from Fisher 22 is starting to flow to the west slowly, but it's making its way encroaching upon the perimeter of the power plant. And this has raised new concerns. Previously, we had talked about the pentane and the governor's actions that he took in order to help remove that flammable liquid. The new concern is around a potential uncontrolled release of hydrogen sulfide gas. Now, Puna Geothermal Venture operates dozens of wells drilled mile plus down into the earth. And these wells operate normally in a closed system, but the concern is that what happens with the volcanic eruption could the volcano trigger an uncontrolled release of gas through these boreholes to address these concerns. Governor Ige tasked Tom Travis of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency to help oversee the proper closure of these wells. But the confusion around the process and exactly what was going to take place really was another cause of concern for the community. Now, the lack of communication here was paramount to the issues. Fisher 6 is also active on the corner of Poiki Road and Leilani Avenue. Looking at this thermal map from the USGS HVO, we see how these flows have progressed over the previous days. That will do it for May 20th and May 21st of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Thank you for joining me. Aloha.